Welcome. I'm Randy Patterson. In this course, we're going to explore a complicated question. What causes clinical depression? You might guess that our ultimate answer is going to be complicated and a bit uncertain. But depression is, by some measures, the most costly ailment, physical or psychological, in developed countries. And it's one of the primary causes of disability in developing economies as well. So a tremendous amount of effort has gone into identifying the origins of this problem. If we know what causes it, maybe we can prevent it, and maybe we can treat it more effectively. The answer we will arrive at is that depression is caused by different things for different people. If we can identify the specific factors contributing to depression for a given person, maybe we can tailor their treatment to their particular situation. We can match the treatment to the specifics of the individual and maybe be more effective as a result. What we're going to discover is that there is no single cause for depression, any more than there is a single cause for fever. Depression is a deep valley that can be entered by a, any number of paths. And luckily, many of those pathways have been identified. In my work, one thing seems very clear. Most depressions are caused by more than one thing. We have a tendency to see a person with depression and ask, what was the cause? The answer to this question almost always is, that's the wrong question. We should be asking, what are all the causes? In my work as a psychologist, I often meet with people suffering from depression, and many of them are in search of that one reason that this has happened. I call this presumption the myth of the single cause. We need to set that aside, and for each person, try to see the whole picture for this reason, I tend to avoid the word cause when I talk about depression. Like most people writing in the literature, I prefer to talk about risk factors. This term, risk factor, carries within it a presumption that there may be more than one. Now, there are several different types of mood disorder. Major depressive disorder, dysthymia, cyclothymia, bipolar disorder, and others besides. In this course, I will be focusing mostly on major depressive disorder, which we often call major depression or clinical depression, to distinguish it from everyday low mood. We often say things like this. Oh, this is depressing. I'm depressed. I didn't get the tickets I wanted. Ah, oh, the weather is so depressing today. Here we're concerned with something more severe. But in saying that, I have to acknowledge that depression is not really a distinct entity like mumps or the flu, where you either have it or you don't. Instead, depression lies along a continuum. There's elevated, expansive mood, everyday mood, what we might call the blues, and then down at the far end, we have clinical depression. And clinical depression itself can be classified as milder, moderate, or especially severe. There is no clear dividing line separating true depression off from general low mood. We do have a list of diagnostic criteria, and people like me can spend a great deal of time trying to decide whether someone falls on one side or the other of that line. But the line isn't magic. And in fact, most treatments that work on one side of the line tend to work on the other side of the line as well, with a few exceptions. I'm guessing that you're taking this course because you know someone with some degree of depression. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's your patients or your clients. And maybe it's clinical depression. Maybe it isn't. 
most of the risk factors that I'll talk about in this course apply to normal range dips in mood as well as the severe dips we see in clinical depression. Do keep one thing in mind. This course is not treatment and it is not a substitute for professional care by a healthcare professional who can assess you or the person you care about face to face. Do not use this course to try to diagnose yourself or to get by without needed treatment. This course is an assist and an information source. That's all. It is not a replacement for care. As we go, you might like to follow along in the set of notes that are given for the course. Just download them and read these on your computer or print them out. If you are here because you experience depression yourself, you'll find checkboxes for all of the causes of depression that we cover in this course. You can tick the ones that seem relevant in your own case. You might put a, a large tick or two ticks for causes that seem especially relevant and smaller ticks for those that seem less important to you. This might be something you could take to your physician or your therapist. So, let's get started. As I said, there are many different risk factors, so many that I cannot possibly cover them all in detail. But I'll do what I can. In the next lecture, we'll think about how to organize our list, and we'll see that we can categorize the list in several different ways.